Well, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Pleasure to be here. Uh, this uh, is an operation I've done for a very long time myself, probably 30 years, I have no disclosures. And the idea is, uh, is that basically to treat stress incontinence, all you need to do is support the antivascular wall, since stress incontinence is a vascular disease to start with. So I'm not interested in, in slings for this condition, let alone mid urethral sling that I'll talk about in a few minutes. So the idea is simply to provide support to the antivascular wall, and then that alone will repair incontinence. When I counsel a patient, they're always interested to know what the long term of this operation is. So this year, I started to look at a minimum 10 years follow up, which is a bit of a challenge because obviously the numbers decline over time. And then some people we cannot reach. The, um, in this group, we have some that were followed still in the office, and some that were uh, basically interviewed over the phone while underwent having the same types of questionnaires. We had lots of follow up, unfortunately, like most long term series. We use the same validated questionnaire that we used when we started this in 1996. <clears throat> so at least we were consistent with that. And we define failure as any reoperation for stress incontinence. The median age of our population is here with the BMI. The people have had prior hysterectomy or concomitant hysterectomies. The stages of a prolapse, stress incontinence, early stage is here. And then the more advanced prolapse is here. And this is a medium follow-up at 13 point years ranging from 10 to 22 years. The A point did not move much over time. <clears throat> so uh, baseline was here, post up at the mean of uh, 13 years is here. P values is significant, same for the BA point. No real changes for the other points vaginally. And the symptom scores, as you would expect, have improved uh, significantly from baseline to the follow up. Very little issues in voiding difficulties and no real issues in urge incontinence. When you simply support the antivascular wall, you're not really affecting voiding functions. Quality of life was excellent and the IQ7 was still low. We had some reoperation. We had about 23 in total, uh, some for the enter compartment and some for stress incontinence with an overall success rate of 86%. Interesting enough, people that were not coming back, those who were just called in had much lower scores of UDI6, which was interesting for us. And there was no difference in the reoperation rate between those followed in clinics and those called over the phone. <coughs> No difference with the uterine status, and basically, as expected, the patient with a larger prolapse were older at the time of surgery, but no changes in the reoperation rates. So, in summary, this is a stable operation uh, that supports the antivascular wall from the bladder neck all the way to the upper vagina and can address both stress and prolapse with a low reoperation rate. Thank you. Uh, Phil. Uh, uh, your uh, concluding message uh, is very, very strong because uh, you suggest uh, uh, the, that uh, your, uh, your, uh, your procedure provide that satisfactory and durable results after uh, so long term. Uh, as you know, in the literature, there is uh, 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 different data about uh, the long-term results uh, with the native tissue repair, mainly, obviously, in the anterior compartment to repair. So um, I think we, we, we need to be, uh, I, don't, I know that actually after the FDA concern and after a lot of uh, uh, criticism on, on mesh, transvaginal mesh repair, but we, we have other uh, opportunity, for instance, the uh, other treatment from abdominal weight. So I would be a little uh, careful in, uh, in because this is a strong message, obviously according to your experience, but uh, I think that is not a, a, a surgical uh, um, manner to approach the, 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 the anterior vaginal prolapse. It's a, it's, a, it's a biochemical problem because the, the collagen is the, the real man uh, uh, active uh, uh, protagonist of the, of the uh, results or failure. The problem is not surgery, not the sur surgeon as an important, but you know, and that's the reason why has been introduced uh, the the mesh surgery. Well, you know the data on Birch, correct? Birch is long-term data, which is very solid as well. Birch is different one. Yeah, it's exactly the same. It's a Birch vaginally with an addition of the support of the upper vagina. This basically support the vaginal neck like the Birch, just done vaginally instead of being retropubic, and the rest of the vaginal is supported all the way to the upper vagina. So it's exactly the same concept, same retropubic scarring, 
This long-term data is very solid. It was not reviewed by me. It was work reviewed no, no, by I, I a third-party person. Make, uh, and so uh, I happen to have people in the audience who have done this surgery, even a fellow who started that database. We all do this operation. I can tell you if, if this was not good durable outcome, I would know and I would change. Okay. <coughs> Any question? There are two microphones in front, please. Uh, just state your name, profession, and where you come from. I okay. have one question. Yeah, you, okay, please. So, C.R. Powell from, from Indiana. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Philippe, I, I, you and I have talked a lot about this operation um, in, in full disclosure. But um, do you think the results of this operation would be better, um, to your point, um, if it, or sorry, would be equal if it was done with an absorbable suture or, or because this is always done with proline, right? So right. in a way, it's, it's, it's a little bit like a mesh. Because the idea was to compare with birch, which is uh -huh. done with proline. Yeah. I've done it with PDS, and uh, I stopped after a few months. It didn't okay. work as well. So, so initially, you need to be able to hold the vaginal in place until the scar forms in the rich pubic space, very much like for the birch. Once the scar is established, as you know, if you've ever gone back on this operation, the rich mm -hmm. pubic space is pretty plastered with scar tissue. It's very scary. Or if you ever looked at MRIs of those patients, it's all scar there, so that's why it doesn't go away. That's why the results are durable. So my question then is, if it is truly a tissue problem, then what I would expect over time, if you had, say, a, a one-year absorbable type of a stitch, that that would fail over time as well. But you would, you would maintain that a, a one-year absorbable stitch that's gone after one year, the results would still be durable. Well, you know, you've cut those stitches after you've seen them exposed vaginally and nothing mm -hmm. happens. So the, the stitches are there initially to allow the scar to form. When the scar mm -hmm. is formed, you don't need the sutures anymore. Okay. It's same, same for birch. You can always cut birch sutures afterwards and nothing will happen. The scar is there. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank, thank you. you.